you might remember that that first trans, uh, transcontinental railroad came into Oregon in the late 1800s. Now, to put this in historical um, pers um, perspective, I guess, you have to understand that the Civil War had only been over about 30 or 40 years then. And so the role of blacks at that time on the railroads were largely servant-type roles, roles, because those were the kinds of roles that people were used to seeing blacks have. They had been slaves, and that was kind of a natural progression into um, uh, servant-type roles. Waiters, uh, cooks, uh, people who were Pullman porters or chair, chair car porters. By um, 1941, 98.6% of blacks in Portland were employed by the railroad. Out of that community that grew, uh, we had a lot of firsts in the black community. The first black newspapers, uh, new black churches grew up, uh, entrepreneurs, businesses, civic clubs and organizations, social clubs. Um, Dad's um, father had come first to Portland and got work right away on the railroad, probably as a, a porter. A shift was usually 36 hours, six days on, three days off, $1.25 an hour, plus tips, no pay until you uh, made your return trip. Uh, Dad, this is one of my memories as a, as a youngster, that Dad always had a pocket full of change. And I loved uh, waiting for an opportunity to go dig in that one of those pockets <laughs> and uh, take out some of the change so that I could go buy candy at Maxie's Better Buy. Dad said, that, and I heard this uh, expressed by my, my, by my father as well, Dad said that there was a way to correct people and keep your dignity. So while white passengers on the train might call him boy, and that happened a lot, he'd straighten people out with the following. My name is Mr. Gordley. That's how you address me. You have to understand this. Um, the Pullman porters, they were always sharp. The white shirts that they wore were crisp, starched. Um, a part of our routine at home, my sister and I were responsible for making sure that those shirts got to stewards cleaners and back home. And sometimes we had responsibility for ironing the shirts. And, uh, and I mean doing it uh, perfectly. I, I, I just have a strong memory about those shirts. Um, but also, um, and this is a statement that was true for all of those uh, railroad men, they always dressed sharp when they were out of uniform, is what, I, is what I'm saying. They had fine suits, shoes, hats, um, in fact, we buried my father with one of his favorite hats uh, and the golden spike. Um, Dad would, always, would also bring home to uh, my mother from his runs on the railroad uh, fine clothing and gifts. Um, and I, I guess the point I'm making here is that personal appearance really mattered to um, that generation of um, black folk who were building community. I don't remember anything about my grandfather in the railroad because he died when I was eight, but I do remember quite a few things that my dad had to say, and there weren't very many of them that were good. He actually hated his job as a waiter on the road. He hated the indignity that the men had to endure if they wanted a tip because they were dependent upon their tips they were underpaid for their work and deliberately underpaid so that they would be even more ingratiating to the customers and hopefully earn a dime more. It got so bad, my daughter and I were talking about this, about my coming here to speak to you, and 
she remembered her grandfather talking about hating his job so much that he would throw up when he knew he had to go out. He also used to talk about hot beds in Chicago, that you didn't rent a room for the night on your layovers, you rented a bed, and somebody probably just got out of it to go back to work themselves. <laughs> and so you slept in a hot bed, literally. Um, he didn't like that either, needless to say. <laughs> I think the, the thing that stuck with me the most, though, was you practically had to train a gun on my dad to make him eat in a restaurant. After the years of seeing how I think some of his co-workers responded to mistreatment, and having grown up with we cater to white trade only signs here in Portland, I don't think he was ever very sure about the cleanliness of the food he would get in a restaurant and really did not want to eat in white restaurants anyway um, because I don't think he trusted what folks could or would do having seen what some of his co-workers did do. <laughs> I mean they couldn't say anything but some of them did get back in their own ways and knowing that I, th I think it was uh, yeah I think it stuck with him. <laughs> Um, even though he hated his job, I'm sure he loved the men because he was very actively involved in the retired railroad group of men. He went to their annual dinners every year, got lots of pictures. Miss Johnson, her husband was a, a waiter also, and she and I made a trip. She took me to St. Louis when I was about 13, and I swear, they fed us the entire way. <laughs> One thing you have to say about the men who worked on the road, and that is they took care of their own. And in those days, you had linen and china and silver and a real chef with real food. And I mean, it was wonderful. It really was. Um, even though the job may have been especially hard for the men and in the early years even worse, uh, they, like I said, they took care of their own. Abel used the word sharp. I would use the word dapper. Um, my, I don't know that anybody ever saw my dad in a pair of tennis shoes or a pair of jeans unless he was working in the yard. That was it. He was changing his clothes and putting on a jacket and a hat to go to the store or the liquor store or anywhere, they were not going to be seen on the street and not be dressed. I don't know how much of that had to do with the times where everything and everybody was more formal, or the times where we're still trying to be recognized as real people uh, without the remnants of slavery hanging over us. Um, but I do know they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, those men had a kind of courage in the face of adversity that they faced on a regular basis that I don't think our young men today could even begin to understand, let alone try to emulate.